All right, so I'm <clears throat> doing a quick overview on a Bible that I received today. This is the Chriswell Study Bible. He was the preacher um, years ago at First Baptist Church of Dallas, I believe. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, I got this. Um, this is a 1972 or 74, which I'll have to look at it when we're in here. But this is um, what I received. And it's in a burgundy padded cover, and then they have the stained page edges. Um, I didn't realize when I had bought this so inexpensive that it was going to be in such good condition. It still has this little slip that's on there. I'm sure they just had cellophane around that when it was... I mean, it came brand new. Nobody's used this. In fact, the reason I'm doing this review first, and I'm doing a little bit of a teaser, is because I noticed the ribbon marker hasn't even been taken out um, of the the Bible. So let's take a quick look at what it says here. It says the King James Version presentation page, uh, Dr. Quizzle's personal references and study notes, Old Testament chronology, pro prophecies fulfilled in the Messiah between the Testaments, heart, uh, home in the heart of scripture, concordance, glossary, map index, Bible study maps, in color, other features. So then there's your movement marker, burgundy pad cover, stain edges. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up is just because I got it this way and I got some other Bibles that are from like the 70s and stuff that are actually 60s, sorry, 60s that were never used, never used. And I'm going to be kind of helping people in later videos how to find that kind of stuff and get stuff. And then I'm going to be teasing you about this Bible here before I get into the review. This, you can see that one's still in cellophane, right? No ISBN numbers, you don't get none of that. Oh, by the way, you'll get it later, but this is genuine leather. And this is Holman's Heritage Bible, which is a lot like the Concord, Cambridge Concord, but a lot smaller, but the print is almost the same. Um, I'm thinking it might actually be the same size print. And the red letter, it's nice. It's really, really nice. And... Um, it's just amazing. These are out of print, but you can still get them brand new, which will be on future videos. Because somebody asked me about that. I was going to review that today, and I said, like, you know, I want to put out a video, kind of like a teaser towards this Bible so more people can get there. Because I have a feeling once I announce it, they're going to sell completely out, and nobody's going to get a chance to get it. So I'm going to do that video probably a couple reviews from now, so it has time where people maybe see this video, and everybody kind of gets a chance. Um, to get one of those Bibles. And I have another one, literally, I have another Bible that people have probably been looking for that are out of print that you can still get from uh, um, in cellophane and bo in the box and everything. In fact, this went out of print, I think, in 1998. That's the only date I could find on there was from the, I think it was the back. But that will be in that review. So the Criswell Study Bible, the reason why I'm also doing this one is because this is what started if you have the full color King James Study Bible from Nelson, or if you have the King James Study Bible from Nelson, the older one, or the uh, there's like a second edition. It all started because of this. It was first the Criswell Study Bible, and then the Nelson, or yeah, Liberty University took that and came up with what's called the King James Study Bible. They used a lot of the, so this is like the first study Bible that led into what you would have now. Um, but Liberty University ended up taking the notes and you know changing some things and adding some things and added on to this, this Bible. But let's take a look at it, so I haven't really got to see it much either. Um, wow, that's some, I've been looking at these older Bibles and it's just amazing. Like the, the, the paste downs, the, the material they use is just amazing. I don't know, it's something I guess you'd have to feel but I can swear that's like some kind of leather. But it's not. It's it's a vinyl paste down. And then the, and look where they hinge it. They hinge it just right. You don't see no when I do that. You see the pressure hitting where it's supposed to. Right here in these two pages. The, those are the ones that are stuck together. I'm telling you some paste downs are just as durable as an edge line Bible. And then you can kind of see. I didn't do the best job when it comes to the staining. But uh, it looks nice when it's closed. It's better than not... Um, it's better than not having anything because what will happen, and I'm going to add more to it probably myself just to um, make it look better, but what will happen with a, a Bible that just has a white edge, uh, the dirt and oils from your fingers, wherever you flipped your pages the most will end up showing on the side. So it's good to have something there to kind of 
uh, keep from seeing that when you use it a lot. You can see it was brand new, not presented to anybody. Uh, the Criswell Study Bible, authorized King James. And let's see, let's look at the copyright on this thing. Well, this is Thomas Nelson. Now, the paper feels like the French milled paper, but I don't think they started doing that until the 80s and 90s, if I remember right. Um, and this is not as opaque, but it's, it's very opaque paper. But the paper is just amazing. I wish they had Bibles with paper like this. And, of course, the camera and the lighting I'm, used, I'm using is uh, showing more uh, ghosting than what there really is. Um, copyright. Okay, 1979. I'm sorry. So this would be, yeah, 1979. It was the first printing of 1979, if I'm looking at that correctly. So this is a first print. This is a first print, brand new Criswell Study Bible. That's crazy to think about. A first print, and I got this just for a few bucks. And it's the first print of the Criswell Study Bible, brand new. That is just amazing. So here's the forward. Let me kind of bring this up. I'm going to have a much better setup. I'm using a lapel mic. I finally got that set up. And um, I got the lighting not set up like it should be. I don't have my setup, so I'm still using my hand going in and out. I'm going to have it where my hands are going to be free, so it's easier for me to do reviews. Hopefully that will be done tomorrow. I'm just trying to clean now that I'm starting to get some of my sanity back and after some stuff that's been going on for the last five months, I think it's been, six months maybe. So you see this was... Um, Paige Patterson, President, Criswell Center for Biblical Studies. I'm not sure. Did Criswell? Well, you could read that. Yeah, he was, he was the pastor at First Baptist Church of Dallas. I, I used to listen to him. I still do on YouTube. But, man, some of the best sermons I ever heard was from, from W.A. Criswell. I have a bunch downloaded. and Now that I use YouTube Red, I just download them to my phone and watch the videos or... Or whatever so man he's a good preacher we need to get back to that kind of preaching we really do there's people that are getting our theology is getting better I think people are really nailing down eschatology a lot better nowadays and they're getting their theology right because there's so much information there's so much you can filter out now but man the preaching is kind of dulled down I, I still like that old-fashioned preaching I really do all right so you got books of the Old and New Testaments then you got spelling changes. Okay, so this is the fr I remember seeing this in the King James Study Bible, one of the editions. I know it was after uh, when Liberty University got a hold of it, and I thought it was them that did it. But all this does now. This might affect some King James onlyists out there. Um, I'm. I'll get into what I'm doing later, but um, yeah, I'm a KJV uh, best guy right now. So. Uh, and that took, I was able to study all those things, like te get more deeper in the textual criticism. And uh, I returned to the King James. I don't take the same position I used to, though. But what it will do is take afterwards to afterward, all way to always. So pretty much what it's doing is taking the, the English to American English. Like music doesn't have the K. Now, some people get upset about this one, but I think this is, let me see, where's that? Like Savior. Instead of seven letters, it would be six. And then they get a numerology and they get all these kind of thoughts that, oh, it's not a real King James Bible because it has a six-letter Savior and the number six is rebellion. Oh, come on. Well, it's the number of man. Isn't God also a man? And his, Jesus was man and God, fully man, fully God. I don't get into, like, conspiracy theories and stuff that you just cannot prove from the Bible. I just don't do that. You do have the Scarlet Thread of Redemption by W.A. Criswell, which that's actually found in a lot of Bibles. I don't know if it says it was by... So it's W.A. Criswell. So maybe he's the one, but I think that's in the Open Bible, which I'm going to be reviewing, the new Open Bible. Um, I'm not too impressed, but it's kind of grown on me in time. Uh, so the Bible, the book, a book of destiny, it's, so the value of the Bible, the theme of the Bible, some good stuff. Man, this paper is amazing, guys. I might not use this that much just because it's the first printing of the Criswell Study Bible in perfect condition. But that that would be kind of, I don't know. I'll see what I do with it. I don't want to be, a, I'm not a Bible hoarder. I just get lots of Bibles to review. And then I'll buy ones to review, then I give, give a lot away. But um, if you've seen videos in the past, there's times I've given, I don't know, how over hundreds of pounds of, I mean, pr premium Bibles. Because I don't need them all. 
I know I'm going to be getting rid of, rid of a lot of ESVs and, and um, some of the newer translations. Um, but there's a couple I still like reading the ESV and the NASB, but I think the King James is best. That's just how I think now. And I've had so many, I've had some comments. Let's see. Let me get back to the Bible. Sorry about that. But I will say I've had some comments. People are like, you're all over the place. Well, you get time to think and you just, I had to do a reset button. It was, what, two years ago. And then you realize there's a lot more to this than what I thought. And there's a lot more to it than what King James only is, think. So you got uh, you got outlines, introductions, and then you have outline. Then you have Genesis chapter one, the creation. See, I need to reset this lighting, so hopefully this comes through all right. And I'm not going to go through this extensively right now. I just want you guys to check it out. But man, there's a lot of notes. Of course, Genesis always has so many notes. I think he, be I, b I believe W. A. Criswell was a gap theory guy, if I remember right. But yeah, you can see that there's the scripture and there's the notes. So this has a lot of notes in some areas and not so many in other areas. Let me just kind of ramble. It has quite a bit of notes. And these are W.A. Criswell's notes, which uh, he's going to be a dispensationalist. I am not a dispensationalist. Uh, I used to be a hardcore dispensationalist. It just doesn't hold water, in my opinion. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but in my opinion, it doesn't hold water. Um, I don't see myself ever going back to dispensationalism. Um, maybe I should do more videos on that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this thing is just packed. Let's see what it has in between the Old New Testament. So Malachi. I really want to be careful with this thing. First, The first printing of the Criswell Study Bible, the very year that it came out. So this is Malachi. So it has some charts, Southern and Northern Kingdom. And it's got King prophets and then the date so that's some dating system which helps and those dating systems will let you know if it's more conservative or liberal but Chris is going to be more conservative which is good um, and some more from the northern and southern kingdom okay and then it has Old Testament chronology chart you check that out that's pretty cool I know I'll do more of an in-depth Bible review. I say that a lot and I never do. I should not say that. I don't want to lie. Um, so it does have stuff about Between the Testaments by Charles F. Uh, F. I can't see it from here. I'm looking to the camera. Pfeffer? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, the Persian period. The Alexander the Great. So it's, it's going on, of course, what, what, what happened during the 400 what so-called silent years. In fact, I got a King James Apocrypha that I'm going to be reviewing too. But um, yeah, so it's going to give you some information about what happened during those 400 years. And then intertestamental chronology. That's interesting. That's pretty neat. I like that. This thing is packed. I, th I, didn't, I didn't think it would be. I thought since the King James Study Bible and then the full color King James Study Bible kind of started with this one, this one would have a lot less information. It, it has a lot of information, which is really good. And the paper feels like, like it's uh, cotton. It feels like linen. It's really nice. And the, the opacity and the boldness of the text is great. I wish this camera would like be real, but you know how these cameras are on these phones. They want to do like super HD, so they intensify everything to make it look sharp. Because there really is not hardly any ghosting on this Bible. But the, the camera just makes it look so much worse than what it is. And then you got the New Testament. The Lord and Savior, no six letters. That might drive some people nuts. It's just Americanized, that's all. It's not changing the meaning of anything. Then, like you see here, just a bunch of notes. Man, it's got a lot more than I thought it would have. Oh, let's look at the ribbon. And then we'll go to the, the back and see what it has in the back. So let's look at this ribbon. Um, well, if I can, all right, let's see, <laughs> wow, you th 19, what was it, 78, I think, and it's still like it's brand new, that's amazing, it's nice, 
has a nice feel to it. It's nice and thick, but it's of course it's narrow, but it's thick. It feels like a Beresford ribbon. It really does. It has that feeling. It doesn't it doesn't look far off from one, but I know it's not Beresford. That's not bad at all. I'm gonna leave that in there. That is just amazing, guys. All right, let's go to the back, and then we'll finish this up. I always go too long on these. I'm already 15 minutes in, and I start. Now, this is the middle. I just opened to this. Revelation, there's actually a chart in Revelation. Now, this is going to be your normal pre-trib, dispensational viewpoints, all that stuff. So I don't know if I'd get anything out of this one personally, but if you're a dispensationalist, you probably could get something out of here. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to get all kinds of questions. Well, what do you believe now? Okay, so you do have some helps in the back. Prophecies of uh, the Messiah fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Um, I think there's a lot more than what these things say. Because, you're, like I said, you're taking a dispensational viewpoint. Let's see what else is next here. The Home in the Heart of, the, of Scripture from Dorothy Kelly Patterson. The great ar uh, archaeological discoveries. Th I always like this stuff. And, of course, you know there's so much more now than since the 70s. We found so much more stuff. But this is a good place to start. So I would really, you know, go to, uh, I think eBay now allows you to buy stuff um, without having an eBay account. Because I had to use my son's eBay account to get this one. I was surprised it's brand new. It's never used, and it's the first print. I didn't know that till I did, till I started doing this video. So there's that. And then it's got a glossary. See how it uses what kind of? It doesn't tell you what kind of glossary, but so theological terms and stuff like that kind of tells you a simple brief of what the atonement is, stuff like that. Now is it all theological creed creation? No, it's not all. Th I mean, it's gonna be all theological in one sense, but you know what I'm saying. Christophany, the church. I don't know if he takes um, local and universal approach to the church or not. Confession, congregationalism, deity. Some interesting stuff. I like straight to the point stuff like this. If you're just you know wanting to learn something really quick, of course you're not going to learn it in depth, but just get an idea of what what that term or theological term means. A dispensation. There you go. See. Esc uh, Ecclesiology, ecumenical, elder election. Anyway, so that there's a glossary of terms, more like theological stuff. Let's see. Then you do, oh, I saw this concordance. Where have I, it must be another Thomas Nelson. I've seen this concordance and I like it. I just don't remember. It's from an old Bible I had. I think it was one of those, the old reference Bibles, the hand size ones that Nelson made. I, I want to say it's, it's really, I mean, it's just, I like the way it's laid out. Three columns, very bold. That's another thing about this, this Bible. It has a very nice, bold print. And uh, it's very bold and easy to see from even where I'm at. And I'm looking through a camera, which even shrinks it down more. I'm looking through my phone. Um, nice concordance. That's awesome. Now we're going to see some old Nelson maps. I can kind of see the edge of them where they went throughout the whole page. Index to Bible maps. Oh, and that's on thicker cardstock. So you do have uh, lists of places and names, and it shows you how to look it up on the map. But I never was a fan of Nelson's maps back in the day. Yep. Yep, full page. There's no border to them. But they do. They do get the job done. They do get the job done for the most part. Do they have anybody crossing? I don't even think that they did that. I don't know. Is there an Exodus? Uh, the Wandering in the Wilderness. I would think um, that might be it, but they don't. The Sea of Reeds. Look at that. See, the Red Sea goes in here and here, but they call it the Sea of Reeds, which. Um, or it says Red Sea, too. Okay, that's good. So this must be the Exodus route that they give, but there's nobody going through any water, which that's a shame. In fact, and then they have Mount Sinai down here. With Most of the time you'll see that with a question mark, because I believe Mount Sinai is right there in Iraq. And I, I believe, personally, with the Common Man Reference Bible, which I don't really recommend it. Never, I did for a long time. I don't recommend it now. But uh, I think he has it right. 
because he went with the evidence. He just these guys read the Bible and went there and found it. They found Mount Sinai. They found the the burnt top of the mountain. They found the the altar that um, was set up for sacrifice. It was it's just amazing. But it's got a lot of maps though. So. Um, Okay, you guys, that's it for this Bible. And this is nice. I like this material. And they really press this down. Let me see how this... Let's look at the spine. Oh, yeah. That's actually a really nice-looking spine. That's, if you could tell that's pressed down by even looking at it. I wish they would still do spines like that. I know CBP, Church Bible Publishers, they do with the, the water buffalo. They do a really good job, which I got a lot. Man, I got 15 plus Bibles I need to review I think that you guys would be really interested in but if you can find it it's the Criswell Study Bible uh, in about uh, two, three, four, five more reviews I'll finally tell people where to get this but this thing is amazing amazing look at the size my hand's bigger than the Bible and then when you open it up it, it does the cross references the way that um, the Concord does so it doesn't you shouldn't have you do have a reference note. Okay, I remember how this works. Because I used to have one when a world world publishers used to publish this. But it would take the reference, and you'll have an R in different places. And that R will be determined. Okay, so it has one reference in for verse 20. If it has more, you'll see an R, so it goes in order. It'll have one R, then two R's, and three R's in the same verse. You'll know which reference it's talking about. Which is a little bit better than the Concord, because you don't know where you're going with the Concord. Even though I still like it. But this is, this is like the same layout. Not the same pagination, not anything like that. It just looks a lot like it. It's kind of like they cloned it, but it's smaller. And the paper quality on this one's good, too. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I could not find... See, it was bound... RRD. Now, they do their printing in China now, don't they? So this would probably have been done. This probably would have been printed in America if it was 1998. Because the only thing, only um, kind of giving you guys a teaser trailer. But uh, oh, I'll go over it when I can, guys. But you can still get them wrapped in a box. Everything just amazing. Genuine leather too. Not the greatest, but well, you can get anything rebound nowadays by like uh, I'd go Ben's Bibles and uh, AA -A 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 leather or Ben's Bibles two best and uh, AE Bibles I guess is really good too um, but the way that AA does it and Ben's Bibles is going to be the way they rebind Bibles the technique they use is better than anybody else's technique and I'll get into that on another video but anyways guys till next day or till next time good day God bless